remains at war. The Allies are struggling to get a grip on the German forces, but they are doing their best and put up a mighty effort. The Japanese Empire is crumbling under its own weight, though its navy is looking mighty fierce, rivaling the Americans. And it's the Americans' turn, turn four to be exact. And our industry has not been at all touched by this war, since we have a whole 40 IPCs to spend. So we are buying a bomber, a destroyer, a submarine, a transport, a tank, and we're saving one IPC till the next round. And now we will do combat moves. For combat moves, first we have uh, over in the European theater, bomber from Britain is of course bombing Germany. Fighter from Egypt, fighter from Morocco are both coming in. One with one move left and one with three. Oh, I get some dice. I'll do it after a cut. Anyway, um, this tank is also blitzing through Libya into Egypt. This artillery is also moving into Libya. Uh, actually, no. This the artillery is going to stay in Algeria. Misspoke. Anyway, so now in the Pacific. Don't know why I have that. Don't know why I have that there quite yet. Oh, it's right here. It's got knocked over. Not yet. So we are attacking with a fighter. One season forty seven. With one movement left. One two. There's now one thirty five. With two movements left. Then I'm bringing two submarines into from Sea Zone 46 into Sea Zone 37 to try and destroy this cruiser. And by the way, I do believe destroying a transport counts as a combat move. Just heads up. And I just assume that you would want to bombard instead of destroying the transport because that's not more influential to the battle which was done in Malindrak of Cascadia's last turn so now last big combat move is moving this fleet some of it would be technically a non-combat but doesn't matter too much and offloading an infantry and a tank with uh, two bombardments from a battleship and one from a cruiser. Now let me get some dice to mark how many movements the fighters all have left around the Pacific. And I will set up the first battle. Let's, Let's start with the battle for the Mediterranean. Two fighters are attacking the German battleship. All right, the two fighters. Now, I could check on the rules. I'm going to rule as the battleship is not damaged. Maljack of Cascadia never really made it clear on whether the battleship ever got repaired from when it got damaged very early in the game, quite a while ago. I'm very cloudy, to say the least, on battleship repair rules. I've looked through the rule book and couldn't really find anything. If you could tell me, I'm just going to rule as undamaged battleship, but I'd really like to know if it's still damaged, because they, they didn't say anything about it, so I won't rule for undamaged just in case.
got one hit. And now the battleship returns fire. One hit. Of course, the one with one movement dies, and the battleship gets damaged. My fighter misses. Battleship hits. Ouch. So basically, I would still have this fighter if it is, if it was damaged in the beginning. We've been taken out in the first round of combat. And I would still have the fighter, fighter, and I would land in Egypt. But since I believe it is, it was undamaged at the beginning of the battle, putting a damaged battleship back in C zone 17. Please. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to be wrong. Now I'll be back. Oh, Libya's immediately taken from the Blitz. Um, this. Oh, I'll say this has two movements left. That has three. Sorry about that. Now. Let's move on to the strategic bombing. This one I don't think I need to set out. Just defenders back, attackers red. Attacker got four. Me. I have some chips already laying out. Oh, and now. Let's destroy these transports. And I will set up the Battle for Borneo. Okay, Battle for Borneo set up. Looking at it, maybe it wasn't as smart of a move to go for all those transports. Considering how long of a trek it will be to get back to the US. But we've got the two uh, land units, and we do have the bombardments. So let's start attacking. My one infantry misses. My tank and crew, my, let's see, my tank, miss, my cruiser bombardment, hit, battleship bombardment, miss. Terrible rolling. On right, Japanese fire back. One hit. Take it on my infantry. Okay, now let's. Well, four. So I'm all at the same time. Two black are defending infantry, and the red is tank. Oh, my tank dies. Borneo goes back to the Japanese. I just got this whole fleet sitting here for nothing. Maybe the British can take it. <laughs> They're quite a bit closer. Anyway, now we're going to move on to non-combat move. I'm moving both these fighters back. Wait, no. I've got to roll for this one. Okay, let me see. Yep, so. The submarine surprise attack. You know what happens on the first round? I get a roll. If either of them get a one, neither of them did. Okay. Now I do the regular submarine attack. Both of them miss. And then Cruz gets fire back. Misses. Now, submarine surprise attack. Hit. Cruiser gets destroyed. Cruiser doesn't get to fire back since it is on the surprise attack. I believe that's how Mal and Jack of Cascadia was doing it earlier in the game. Just gonna trust that. So, season 37 is clear of Japanese control. And the so southern fleet has been completely destroyed. Now, on to non combat moves. A move. Both my fighters that came from the aircraft carrier back. 
There we go. Then we're going to move. Ah, oh, yes. Stuff in the eastern U.S. first. Um, I will move an infantry and a tank up to eastern Canada. I'm going to bring my navy up into season 10. Just going to bring an infantry and artillery also up to eastern Canada from the eastern U.S. Hmm. Yep, I'm just going to land this fighter in Morocco. Maybe I can get him next time. Just moving this bomber back to Britain. Where it shall always stay. And just keep on bombing Germany. As it should. Then... I believe that's all they want to do in the east. So in the west, I already did the moves with the Pacific Fighters. Um, I actually think that's all the moves they want to do in the east. They don't want to have too much out there. Sorry about that. Now on to placement. Man. So I'm placing all these naval units, sub transport and destroyer, into season eleven. Where they joined the Atlantic Fleet, trying to rebuild from the Luftwaffe attack in season thirteen. I move my tank, or I put. Yeah, I'm also placing the tank in the eastern U.S. And then I'm I'm taking this bomber. And I'm placing it in the western U.S. Guess where it's gonna bomb? That's a huge stack of infantry. So I get distracted easily. Now, that's everything. I hope you. Oh wait, recap. Have a bomber in the U.K., two infantry, a tank, and artillery in eastern Canada. A cruiser in transport in C zone 10. In C zone 11, I have transport, a submarine, a destroyer. Eastern US, I have a tank and an anti air. Egypt, I have a tank. Algeria, I have an artillery. Morocco, I have a fighter. In C zone 47, I have aircraft carrier with two fighters, a battleship, a cruiser. A transport and two destroyers. I have two submarines in the East Indies, an infantry and fighter in Hawaii, four infantry, a bomber, two tanks, and an anti air in the Eastern US, and uh, infantry in Alaska. I get to move up once this turn from getting Libya. Gonna move the Germans down from getting Libya. Sadly, I could not get Borneo, but I did inflict heavy damage. And because of this one dollar I saved, we still have our booming economy of 40 IPCs. Thank you. Now, goodbye. Hope you enjoyed.